historical moment in Pete Kaiser's life. This is great. He, I really admire how hard he's worked over the years and what a great competitor he's been. Ladies and gentlemen, here comes the champion of the 47th annual Iditarod Sled Dog Race. Way to go, Bethel, Pete Kaiser. It is a, a special day then and again today to have Pete as our keynote speaker. To introduce Pete, I would like to welcome Bering Straits Native Corporation board member and president of Ryanair, Lee Ryan, and he will introduce Pete. Holy smokes. That was, that was really awesome. That video uh, brings back a lot of memories. I was a part of a, a group of people, my wife you saw her on the video, she was, she was the good looking one with the uh, cusp, or the, the um, park on, but during the race, the Iditarod, you guys are all fans of it. You know, I have chills right now watching that video because about halfway through the race, you have this eight, nine, 10 day time frame where you're thinking about how are my, how are my buddies doing? How are my friends doing? How are the people we all look up to doing? We have days and days and days of this, high level of anxiety watching a tracker, and it came to the point somewhere around uh, Anvik in through Grayling, that area, where we were looking at it and we were like, man, if Pete makes a move from Grayling to Caltag, skips Eagle Island, he's gonna win this race. We have to start getting the airplane ready to go. We're like, let's, let's get it ready. And, and we're f three days from actually flying up to Nome. Super exciting. I, I have chills thinking about it. The snow that was coming down at the finish, the, uh, the light breeze, the cool air, the, you could see your breath. Every memory, every feeling of that moment was that of a true champion. And Pete Kaiser is a guy who is meticulous in what he does. He's disciplined beyond belief. But to get where he was going, to know where you're going, you have to know where you're from. And Pete's got a really interesting story. His, uh, his great-grandpa on Janet's side, his mom, is, uh, was, was great-grandpa Alexander Haley. He was a U.S. game warden, and he would, every year, starting the 1st of November, load up his dog team, and he'd leave Bethel, and he'd go up the Kuskokwim, portage over to the Tanana, end up in Fairbanks. From Fairbanks, he would run the team down to Anchorage, Anchorage down to Seward, I could only imagine he was putting prisoners on a boat or something. I don't know what he was doing. And then back up to Anchorage, then down through the Bristol Bay area with his dog team. And then in April, he would come back home. And what would he come home to? A fox farm. His family had a fox farm in Bethel. And, uh, and what's really crazy is that level of history, that, that work that he put in as a dog musher, as a fox farmer, he instilled in his kids. Pete's grandpa, Don uh, Shantz, a lot of you guys in here, I saw the military people up here this morning, but a lot of you people know who Don, Don Shantz was. He was the battalion commander of the strongest National Guard battalion in Alaska, the Bethel Guard. And his wife, Chrissy, lived, grew up on the Fox Farm as well. She's tough as nails. Now they created this really cute, pretty lady, Janet. And uh, Janet is, is the salt of the earth. She still writes letters and sends it in the mail. I challenge you all to do that at some point in time. Write your friends a letter, send it in the mail. But uh, Janet went to college, went back to Bethel, went home, and then there was a guy named Ron who's at home watching these, his dog team right now in Bethel, probably getting ready for Pete. But Ron would, uh, he moved up from Kansas the day he graduated high school, went on an adventure to Alaska. He went up through the Bristol Bay Area, ended in Nome, was working on a gold uh, dredge there, and then he got a phone call or telegraph or something from a, a buddy in Bethel building a house. He said, hey, you need to come to Bethel. Help me build this house. So Ron went down to Bethel and uh, started working on this house, and somewhere in there, there was probably a dance, and he met Janet, and the rest is history. Not quite, because that's where Pete looked back in his history and said, hey, I, I know where I'm from. My family's a dog mushing family. We live off the land. We're, we're culture bearers. We're people that, that uh, instilled our life in rural Alaska. And Pete went to college for a while. He'll tell his story. This is, uh, I'm so excited about Pete coming up here. But Pete went to college and he says, hey, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna 
buckle down and win the Iditarod. So in 2009-ish, he, won, uh, he, he was running 300 mile races. He went up to Nome and he started looking at, uh, looking at the mushers. We were up in Nome playing a basketball tournament and Pete would go every finisher, day or night, he would go out, watch their demeanor as they came in, watch their dogs, how did they care for their dogs. This is before he ran long distance racing. And then Pete decided, I'm gonna win this Iditarod deal and how do I do that? Created a community. His family created this solid community of mushers not mushers, of supporters of mushers, on this dream that Pete Kaiser will eventually become the champion of the greatest race on earth. And what happened this last year? I got chills again. Pete Kaiser, I did rod champion. What do we all say? Way to go, Pete! Way to go, Pete! Way to go, Pete! Way to go, Pete! Ladies and gentlemen, Pete Kaiser! Thank you, Lee, for that, and thank you, Anna, and the whole AFN crew for uh, for having me here today. Uh, first of all, I just first of all, I just want to say thank you for everyone for giving me this opportunity to speak here today. It truly is an honor. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Pete Kaiser. I was born and raised in Bethel, and I graduated from Bethel High School in 2005. I did a brief stint in college at UAF and UAA, but quickly realized I wanted nothing more than to be back home training and racing sled dogs. <clears throat> My wife Bethany and I are proud of our community and where we come from, which is why we call Bethel home and find it important to raise our two children in a rural environment just like we were. Living in a rural community can be tough at times with many unique challenges. These challenges can help shape our lives for the better and give us a different perspective than most. We feel very fortunate to be able to raise our family and live in rural Alaska. I've spent the last several months thinking about what I would talk about today. I do my best thinking on the back of a dog sled, and since we started our season's training in August, I've had many hours to gather my thoughts and share some things I've learned. First off, I had to ask myself, how did I get to this point? Why am I here today, and how did we get here? The obvious answer is that I won the Iditarod. But what led to winning the Iditarod? Even I didn't know the clear answer to this, so I started to piece together our journey. In 2008, I started building my own kennel with the hopes of someday competing with the best mushers in the world. A kennel is a common term for a dog yard or a dog team, but what I am now realizing is that we slowly built the sled dog community. A community that works together to achieve common goals through teamwork and communication. My sled dog community is diverse and has many layers, just like the communities that we live in. Every aspect of our community must be in order to achieve and maintain success. Our puppies are the first layer. Puppies are given warm shelter. They are provided with food and nourishment and they are allowed to play and socialize in a relaxed environment so their minds and confidence can grow. These puppies represent the future of our community and raising them to succeed is a critical component to long-term success. Just like our young pups, it is crucial for our young generations of Alaskans to be raised and nurtured with love, care, positive role models that lead by example, a healthy living environment and an opportunity to let their minds dream and confidence flourish. The next layer is the young adults. These dogs have a place in the team, but will spend a year or two learning from their older teammates before they get a chance to race. These dogs are paired with older dogs that I know will set the best example. They learn by watching. If bad habits are being demonstrated, then they too are likely to learn these bad habits. Learning from an experienced, well-behaved teammate is the easiest way to teach a young dog useful skills. As teens and young adults, our youth will be exposed to many new things. They will be given opportunities unique to the rural communities we live in. Having a positive support system at this stage of life is crucial. The opportunities to wander off the race trail are endless. At this point, it is not necessary to know exactly where your place in the team is, but stay ready, perfect your skills, work on your weaknesses, and be willing to take advantage of your opportunity to shine when it presents itself. Our race team and adult dogs, these are the dogs that represent our community in some of the biggest races in the world. They are the dogs we count on when the going gets tough. Our race team has many different positions, all equally as important as the next. 
These dogs have an understanding of teamwork from years of training and practice. They understand that it takes everyone working together to move down the trail efficiently. Each dog understands his role and uses their particular skill set to help the team perform at the highest level. Adults, we are the team that represent our community. We are the role models that will shape the lives of our children and our youth. We have a responsibility to work together as a team to build healthier, stronger, and safer communities. We have a responsibility to teach our younger generation not by just saying the right things, but by doing the right things. We have the power to give them the tools and the confidence so that they can one day be the leaders of their own team. The last part of our community is our retired dogs or our elders. These dogs spend their days training puppies, relaxing on their dog houses, and passing down years of knowledge and wisdom learned over thousands of miles on the trail. They share a calm and regal presence with our community and need to be treated with the utmost respect. Our elders are the gateway to knowledge and history. They hold and preserve wisdom that cannot be obtained from any book or website. They are the door to our past for the future of our state. Some of us will find our place in the team at a young age. Others will take longer to mature and need more time to hone and perfect their skill set before they are ready to race. Some of them will find a place in the team only to move into a greater position of power as they get older and more experienced. Take my lead dog, Morrow, for example. At seven years old, Morrow won the Golden Harness Award last winter, which is the most prestigious canine award in sled dog racing. As a young adult dog, Morrow barely made the team. In her first Iditarod attempt, she was sent home early from only the second checkpoint. Over the years, she kept at it and slowly developed more skills, becoming a regular part of our race team. During last year's Iditarod, Morrow spent most of the race in the middle of the team. With 300 miles left, she showed more sign of enthusiasm and energy than some of my other leaders, so I put her up in the lead. I felt like this was her opportunity to shine, and she knew it. All her years of patience and practice led to this magical moment, and Morrow led us up the Bering Sea coast to victory. Morrow's story is one of hard work, determination, doubt, perseverance, and the ability to overcome obstacles and help her team achieve success that was bigger than herself. I have no doubt that everyone in this room, whether they know it or not, shares all these same qualities. If you haven't found your place in the team yet, keep at it and be ready for your opportunity. <clears throat> So now I know why I'm here today. My journey and success is the story of a community, region, and state that lifted up one of their own. A story of loving and supportive parents, a wife and kids that stand by my side along with my sister and her family, caring friends, great role models, and loyal sponsors. A story of hard work, determination, and a willingness to overcome challenges and obstacles unique to the rural communities that we live in. Embrace your community. Be proud of where you come from. Dream big. Work hard towards your goals and realize that there are no shortcuts to anywhere worth going. My most talented dog gets nowhere alone, but as a team, great feats can be accomplished. We must all do our part in our community to, to raise healthy, confident children, ambitious, determined, and respectful teens and young adults, adults who are held to the highest standards to ensure our communities keep moving in the right direction, and elders who feel safe, respected, and noble. Let's bring our best team to the starting line and race towards a bright future for our great state. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. And as, as we uh, have people come up to the stage that would like to present our champion with, with a gift, I will read a resolution that was passed by the AFN board. The Alaska Federation of Natives wishes to recognize Pete Kaiser, who exemplifies Alaska Native cultural values and our Native way of life. Whereas dog mushing has always been part of our traditional way of life for all Alaska Native people, Whereas Pete Kaiser Yupik was born and raised in Bethel, and he, is, he and his family continue to live in his whole, hometown. Kaiser began his racing career by winning the Akiak Dash during his senior year of high school. Kaiser has won several races, including four consecutive wins of the Cuscoquim 300, 2015, 16, 
17 and 18. That year we kept chanting, repeat. <laughs> Kaiser has completed, competed in the Iditarod sled dog race 10 times with six top 10 finishes. Kaiser gives back to his community, including through partnering with the YKHC Champions of Wellness program. And on March 13, Kaiser won the 2019 Iditarod Trail sled dog race, the last great race on earth, with a winning time of nine days, 12 hours, 39 minutes, and six seconds. Kaiser is the fifth Alaska native to win the Iditarod Championship. I'd like to ask um, our interior leaders if they would please join me. I, I think this moment uh, deserves the weight of their presence. Um, is Aaron Shutt here, uh, Victor Joseph, uh, Steve Guinness, and our elders, uh, Danakanaga leadership, our uh, first traditional chief, and our second traditional chief. I, I do this because I need, I need that before I do what I'm going to do. Now in our culture, when we, our leadership, they wear these, and please, please come up. Uh, our leadership wear these. These are not taken lightly. These are not um, gifts to be given out uh, and, and taken um, without the proper weight of what they really mean. And we, our elders and our leadership recently met to discuss our protocols on how we uh, gift these. And the one thing that all of our elders said is we cannot gift these lightly. These are so very, very uh, meaningful and they carry a great weight of meaning. And so we do not cheapen them. Uh, in our culture, these are the sign of leaders who have earned their leadership uh, recognition by their works. As our speaker said, not by what they say, by, by what they do. And, and that is the sign. And then these can be worn. And so I want to... Um, I, I see leadership. I heard a beautiful keynote address that I will hold in my heart. Uh, made, gave me chills uh, to hear this message, like our young friend, uh, Simon. And I would like to uh, ask the Athabascan leadership in the room here today if you would agree with me and give me the authority to present a chief's necklace to Pete Kaiser. Do you agree? Because I do not want to give this out of protocol. I do not want to give it lightly. That is not my right. And so thank you. So Pete, with that in mind, I want to present you with this chief's necklace. It is the highest mark of a leader in our region. And with all of my heart, I believe you show those leadership qualities just in what you do with your wife and with your children and with your community. So I'm going to cry, but I'm going <laughs> to give this to you. Thank you. And we would also like to invite from our, um, Pete is a descendant of Bethel Native Corporation and a descendant of Chilista Corporation, a member of uh, our Native tribe, Urutsagami Native Council, and uh, the Association of Village Council Presidents. 
So at this time, I'd like to invite Vivian. On behalf of the Association of Village Council Presidents, we'd like to offer this small gift. It's a Gus Buck. Um, it's, it's a symbol of our culture, and he is our culture. He is an inspiration for every, everyone, our youth all over, the, all over the state. It's a very rare moment for us in the region that Pete has demonstrated in our generation that anything, anything is possible. So again, thank you to Pete and his family, both the Hoffman family and the Kaiser family. We're, we're really grateful for what you have done for us. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Ray Watson. Everything is nicely color coordinated. <laughs> We'd like to invite uh, President Andrew Guy. Uh, we have a gift uh, on behalf of our uh, board of directors and about 32,000 shareholders. And I think Pete is one of our shareholders now. Uh, and it's an appropriate gift. It's an ivory carved uh, dog team. Uh, yeah. And uh, we'd like to express our uh, great uh, appreciation and thanks for uh, being such a great role model for our, for our young folks and our people in general. You know, you exemplify our uh, way of living, the Uyuk spirit of uh, developing the mind, body, soul into becoming a real human being. You know, it doesn't take one day, it doesn't take an instant to master something. Our elders always have taught us that it takes many years of improvement, constant improvement, to get to a stage where you got to. So we're proud of you for accomplishing. Thank you, Andrew. And with the Yukon Kuskokwim Health Corporation, we have Chairman Walter Jim and President Dan Winkleman. Hi. Uh, Pete, on behalf of the Yukon Kuskokwim Health, Cor Health Corporation Board of Directors, we have a a gift for you. We thought that uh, as, the grows, as the days grow a little shorter and the, the ice uh, starts running in the creeks and you, you're going on your training runs down by my house, we thought you could take us along uh, for a ride and we got a nice embroidered jacket for you. So thanks a bunch. And finally we have uh, Christina Wilson. She is with Donlin Gold, who is a major sponsor for Pete. Thank you, Anna. Well, Pete, being from NACNIC and being a BBNC and Pavic shareholder, I kind of wish your family would have stopped when they got to Bristol Bay <laughs> instead of heading north. That would have been great for us, too. But as a state, we're sure proud and sure thankful that we can all celebrate alongside of you. Um, as a company that's committed to safety and to health and to wellness, um, we offer you this gift of sealskin mittens. Um, and we want you to be safe. We want you to be warm. Um, and we um, hope that you'll just carry with you the pride that we all carry with alongside of you. Um, and we look forward to many more. Thank you. And um, from your village corporation, a Bethel Native Corporation, we also present you a gift. And it is a bolo tie, because I know Pete is not a suit and tie type of guy. <laughs> so um, thank you, Pete. Uh, his mom, Janet Kaiser, also served on our board of directors. We're very proud of you from Bethel and from across the entire state. You have done amazing things representing Alaska Native people and you inspire all of us, Koyana. <laughs>